Coming up on Stu Does America, Eric July from Blaze TV is here to give his thoughts on the eventful election weekend. And remember when we made fun of the left morons who said they wouldn't take the COVID vaccine because it was from the Trump administration? Well, leave it to Andrew Cuomo to take another cannonball into the idiot pool. Catch this stupid show on YouTube. I would do it. It's absolutely free. Just search my name, Stu, and I will be the first channel there. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell that gives you notifications when we post. Or if podcasts are more your style, we're there too. Go to iTunes or your favorite provider. And don't forget to rate us the appropriate number of stars, which is five, and leave a review for us. Something like, you know, it's great. Whatever. That'll do or get everything this network offers all in one easy place with a subscription to Blaze TV. Just head to blazetv.com slash stew and then enter the promo code stew because that's how they know you like this stupid show and you'll save 30 bucks. The media is taking great pleasure in Donald Trump's election loss. Uh, If that is the way this thing turns out and you know what? We've, We've promised now to look at them and follow their lead because they are going to, of course, seek out unification in a new administration, right? Right, 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 sure. Let's do the media's short-term memory. Earlier today, Pfizer announced that their early reports on their COVID-19 vaccine were 90 percent effective. I mean, that sounds fantastic. There's still more testing to do. And we're basically just reading that number from their press release. So it's not like it's a sure thing, but it's appropriate to be optimistic. And of course, I'm only talking about you because I am a COVID-19 survivor and have these super mega antibodies that prove it. Mm -hmm. I am personally invincible. That's good news for you, doesn't matter to me, because I'm already a superhero. Of course, there are some rules for vaccines that you should be aware of. For example, vaccines can do a lot of good in every circumstance, except one. As you know, President Trump has promised a coronavirus vaccine by the end of the year or maybe sooner. Would you trust that vaccine? Uh, No. I would not trust his word. I would trust the word of public health experts and scientists, but not Donald Trump. First of all, I don't trust the president on vaccines. I think it's going to be a very skeptical American public about taking the vaccine, and they should be. He will push anything to get reelected. Don't fall for it. And by the way, I will take the vaccine after Ivanka takes it. And if doctors and scientists like Dr. Fauci are taking that vaccine, of course, I will take the vaccine. But we also know that we can't trust the president uh, and take his word. No, you can't do that. You got that? Got all of that? Don't trust the vaccine if it comes from Donald Trump. Hmm. Look, Trump has done a lot to make sure the development of this vaccine happened in record time. And he deserves credit for that. But it's not like he's got a bottle of Diet Coke rubbing alcohol in a tube of Colgate and he's mixing them all together and injecting them into people himself. This is all being done by public health professionals and scientists. (laughs) If only there was a way to find out if there has been political pressure on this process. Like, I don't know, maybe the guy running the project, maybe if he would comment on it publicly. Luckily, he did. Quote, I would immediately resign if there, is, if there is undue interference in this process. I have to say, there has been absolutely no interference, end quote. So weird. The guy in charge of the operation says there has been no political influence in this process from inside the administration. And if you didn't believe that when he said it, it has to be confirmed to you now, right? I mean, Pfizer announced this promising vaccine development literally the first business day after the media declared Joe Biden the winner. And then there's Andrew Cuomo, who thinks the vaccine is good news. But the fact that it can't wait until Biden mania 2021 begins, that, my friends, is bad news. 
It's good news, bad news, George. The good news is uh, the Pfizer tests look good and we'll have a vaccine shortly. The bad news is uh, that it's about two months before Joe Biden takes over. Uh And that means this administration is going to be implementing a vaccine plan. The vaccine plan is very important. Andrew Cuomo is awful. Dot com. For a while now, conservatives have mostly tongue in cheek said that coronavirus is just going to disappear as soon as the election was over. Why do they say that? Well, look at how gatherings are covered when Republicans gather to protest for their, I don't know, their businesses opening and the chance to actually have a livelihood. The media does this. Not wearing masks, they are not staying six feet apart, and then they go back home into communities, and the risk of perpetuating the spread of COVID-19 is real. They don't wear masks, and they scream with their unmasked faces into the faces of police officers, who are also often not wearing masks, which seems risky. These angry, spittle-flecked, mostly men, mostly white, spewing respiratory droplets and indignation. The the president seems to be saying that it's safe to go to the parks and the beaches. Does that argument make any sense to you? No, and I think in, in some ways it really betrays. I think it's a sign of radicalization. And I'm not saying this involves all Trump supporters. It doesn't. These men and women, um, many of them carrying flags, walking around with their guns in your state capitol, not adhering to social distancing uh, orders. Um, they would appear to be in violation of a, a number of laws. Why weren't they arrested? <laughs> yeah. Why weren't they arrested? Honestly, why weren't they all executed? That'll teach them to be so cast- Cavalier with their own lives. I love the middle of that clip there. What was it? Uh, She just throws in as if it's happenstance. Mostly men, mostly white. Can you imagine if anyone said the, uh, mostly women, mostly black. Imagine if I threw that in the middle of a monologue, how well that would go for me. Would that go well? The fact that we just throw out like, ah, it's just men and, and just blame their color and their gender. That's totally fine. Apparently these days, mostly men, mostly white. And look at these scenes from this weekend. Can we be serious for a second here? Biden gets announced as the winner and people take to the streets inches apart from each other. Look at this. Let's uh, this is Prospect Park. Thousands of people gathered outdoors, but thousands together to celebrate Biden's victory. Apparently listening to Dancing Queen, which is like the 15th most annoying part about that clip. All right. uh, How about to Boston? What do we have going on in Boston? Wow. We got Miley Cyrus party in the USA going on. Again, look at these people. Yeah, there's a couple masks on. There's masks on some people. Singing would be like the worst thing you could do in the middle of a coronavirus epidemic. We've seen super spreader events that happen because people are singing in close quarters and no one mask is not going to protect you in that environment. They're so close to each other and they're singing full blast. And there's singing party in the USA, which somehow makes it worse. Then you go to D.C. This is a scene in Washington, D.C. Look at this. Thousands and thousands of people. What is that? 10,000 people jammed into one intersection? Just absolutely going crazy, just inches apart from each other. Another one from D.C. This is in Black Lives Matter Plaza. And... What are they singing? Oh, jeez. Sweet Carol. Somehow they're ma- this is actually worse than the Red Sox. Somehow I don't know how I don't know how that's possible. But look, they're screaming as loud as they can right on top of each other. This is like basically you, Anthony Fauci wakes up in the middle of the night with nightmares of such situations. How about uh, New York City Times Square? Is this uh, the celebration of New Year's Eve, 1999? No. It's uh, apparently a get-together with uh, thousands and thousands of people talking about how great Joe Biden is. Because you know what? What a celebration for minorities all across America to elect a 78-year-old white dude. Uh, Another one in New York City. This is uh, another gathering. People going crazy, screaming as loud as they can, just getting their droplets everywhere. 
This is a, this is droplet mania right here. If you're a big fan of droplets, you're loving the sea. <laughs> How about over in Brooklyn? This is in New York, of course, as well. The incredible excitement that comes from a 78-year-old, mostly senile gentleman. Senility now! I mean, look at this. Again, we should stop here for a second and, 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 and tell you how ridiculous this is. We need to at least observe this for a moment. You should never be that happy or as sad as we saw people after Trump won because your government should not be big enough to elicit that sort of emotion. That shouldn't be something that, that happens in the United States of America. If you're being ruled by Saddam Hussein and, you know, he gets taken out and you're tearing down a statue, okay, I get it, right? I get that. If you're, in, you're in, ISIS gets taken out of your community, I understand a lot of emotion. This sort of emotion, this is, uh, we're going from the Republican to the Democratic Party. This should not, this guy should not rule your life the way he apparently does if you're a liberal. He's in your head all the time and you need to get over it. We need to have a government that cannot do things that would make you that happy. Yes, that is exactly what, government should not be the cause of your happiness. The media criticizes the right for gathering for their causes and then praise and cheer along the left for, you know, gathering the same way. I can understand why people don't think the media really believes COVID is a big, is a big deal. I, I can understand it. But I don't think that's what this is. I think it's the opposite. I think the left never puts human life in front of their agenda. They won't criticize these groups for gathering like this because it helps their agenda. And their agenda is worth the human risk to them. You have to, you know, I don't know, break a few eggs to make an omelet after all. How could the party of science be telling everyone not to take vaccines while cheering on massive gatherings at close quarters? Because they don't care about science. They don't care about these people getting sick and they don't care if this pandemic spreads while it suits their needs. This is why they are vaccine skeptics when they need to be. It's why they are all in favor of massive gatherings when they need to be. It's why they have no interest in preserving human life up to the moment it is born. It's the collective that's important, of course. If a few of these individuals kick the bucket from coronavirus, well, you know, that's the cost of doing business. At least they can get to go out and party on as they're getting the COVID and cheering higher taxes for themselves. It makes perfect sense to me. The truth is, the left and the media, you know, a vaccine is never going to cure COVID-19. The only real cure for the coronavirus to the media is voting for Democrats. So do you want to lose some weight post-coronavirus, post-election, post all this stuff going into Thanksgiving in just a few weeks? You might want to pre-burn a little bit. That's a little trick I've come up with. You kind of eat like pretty well leading up to like a bad holiday and then the holiday hits and you just pack them right back on. That I don't recommend and neither does Fast Blast. Fast Blast does not approve of that, that uh, philosophy at all. But they do have Fasten, which will help you uh, get through any sort of diet bump you might have. Fasten is an app. It's totally free. You can go right now. You're on your, are you listening to the phone right now? Are you, on the, are you watching the web app here for, uh, for uh, The Blaze? Go on there. Go to the App Store right now and type in F-A-S-T-E-N, Fasten. That is the Fast, uh, Fast Blast app, and it will help you track uh, your intermittent fasting progress, like not only your weight loss, but also how much time you have to fast until you can get your ne until your next meal pops up, or let's see, uh, even your mood and your hydration. It has all sorts of cool stuff you can do with it. Um, but most of all, it's going to give you great information and make this process easy. Fast Blast also has great smoothies you can order from them. Um, it's really worth doing it this way because it makes it a lot easier. We always tell you to do your own homework, so I uh, urge you to learn more about fasting with the free Fasten app. Just go to fastblast.com slash blaze, fastblast.com slash blaze, or you can go right to your app store on your phone right now, get it downloaded, get started today. It's fastblast.com slash blaze. I'm joined now by Blaze TV's own Eric July. Eric, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you, thank you. Pretty interesting week we've had. 
It never, it never ceases to amaze uh, and keep you interested, I suppose. Not at all, man. This week has been something, something else. This whole entire weekend was just, just absolutely nutty for me. How do you? What's your fifty thousand foot view of the uh, election? I mean, looking at it, it ended about as how I expected. I more so expected Trump to win, but I also said I would be surprised if Biden wins. Mm-hmm. Definitely, as this whole thing extended with the whole mail-in ballots and all of that, mm. that had only Biden to help, right? There was no way that that was longer. This, this is why I said that, look, if Trump was going to win, he had to win it commandingly. There was no if, ands, or buts, because if the closer it got and the longer they were able to extend that, yes, it may be some weird things taking place, <laughs> yeah. but that was going to only benefit Joe Biden. So I expected that. But I'm not as like down as obviously some of the other conservatives, not because I'm not a conservative, but rather I'm a libertarian, but more so I think that this is the best possible scenario if they are able to maintain the Republicans are able to maintain the Senate. That's uh, huge. Yes, and the House. Then that is probably the most preferable alternative um, or the most preferable outcome anyway, uh, considering that it may cause a lot of like, you know, deadlock there. We'll see. <laughs> we all cheer for deadlock. Yes, I like that. Exactly. Everyone thinks that's a big bad word. It's like, <laughs> no, just please stop doing things. Exactly. Uh, you know, it was interesting watching the reaction to all of this and what you saw. You didn't see the. Uh, the, the, the sobbing <laughs> that you saw, like, you know, when things happen to liberals, they all cry in their car and yell at their, their TikTok. Um, but with this, you saw a couple of things. Number one, people on the left who were in tears as if it was this monumentous moment that had changed their lives. And then number two, people celebrating in the streets, dancing in the streets, gathering in massive crowds. <laughs> That's a whole other story. But like this incredible outpouring of emotion. And all I could think to myself was, we should not have a government that is powerful enough to elicit this type of emotion. This should, this should be something we don't think about on a daily basis, that it's not that big of a part of our lives. It's there, but it's in the distance. And that is not the country we have right now. Not at all. And you, you speak it perfectly. If there is to be a, a government, the most preferable when definitely when it comes to the presidency, something that's so far removed from the individual, it should be a position that doesn't even really even matter who get who, who gets in that bad boy. But people have this emotional, like religious kind of cling to to certainly government. And that's what happened. They they tie their entire emotions upon who wins the presidency, mm-hmm. which is a very bizarre thing. Uh, To me, I do see a lot of like reverse coping is more so what I'm referring to it as, because I think like leftists wanted a reaction to validate their reaction in 2016. And I'd always told people, I know uh, libertarians are so keen on just trying to place both sides as if they're both equal. Mm -hmm. And they would say, well, no matter who wins the election, then that side is going to get mad and start blowing the place up. It's like, no, that's not how conservatives act. They, They haven't acted like that. Like ever, what makes you think that? And I told him, and you see people like the leftists are like, yeah, cope, 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 because they're not screaming into the abyss as they were in 2016. That is a reaction that is very unique to that to that particular side. Definitely when they don't get their way, they were not boarding up all of those buildings and those businesses for Trump supporters in the event that they lost. We know who they were boarding those uh, those buildings for. That really is an, an amazing part of this, though, because they are they closed down cities basically. Yeah. yeah. So because they expected the potential of Trump winning, and then the left coming and trashing their building buildings for no reason. Look, it appears that Trump is going to lose. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, you never know with the legal stuff. We'll yeah, keep yeah. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that for you for sure. But that's the way it's headed at the moment. If that happens, there's been. No reaction like that. No violence from the right. All these groups that are constantly like, you know, the right's always said that they've got all the militias and they've got all the violent people and they want to kidnap the governor and all these things. And, you know, none of it ever seems to come to fruition. Is is there ever a point where people just actually notice this in the media? I think that conservatives as well as libertarians, they need to highlight that as much as they can, because for whatever reason, they get away with trying to express it as if that's the case, like this potential 
uh, idea of these bunch of militiamen will go shoot up the place in the event that they don't get their way. That was never on the table. It was never on the table. That was never even an, it shouldn't even be an expectation. But I think what it is is that people try to speak things into existence and it's more of a projection. Definitely when it comes from that side, we know that's how they've acted. We know there's politicians that have authorized their bad behavior that have said, you can go do this. You, it, It's okay for you to do that. You're just grievous is how you grieve and other stupid stuff. They try to then place that bad behavior on other people to validate their bad behavior. But that comes from them. It uniquely comes from them. And no matter where you're at, libertarian, conservative, you should be honest enough to be able to point to that and say, look, that's how that side reacts. Mm -hmm. The other sides, the, do, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't go blow up our neighbor's house because we got there was some wrongdoing by someone by way of ourselves or someone that we knew. Th that's not how we generally react. That's how they react when they don't get their way. I, I don't want to compare them to toddlers because they're worse than toddlers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Toddlers are cute. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> let, let's, let's talk about, about the, the state of the Republican Party, right? 2006, you go back to the Tea Party, right? Yep. Where the Tea Party, you've got a, a sort of libertarian leaning Republican Party that is very much focused on cutting spending and, and making regulations go away. And Trump kind of runs and flies in the face of that, right? He, he's not, he's never mentioning cutting spending. He's not, that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about getting rid of debt. Those are third, fourth, fifth issues for him. His were big culture war type yep. issues. Um, there was that old sort of, you know, uh, grouping with the, the foreign policy conservatives and, and sort of fiscal conservatives and social conservatives that came together for that sort of Reagan coalition back in the day. Now Trump is here. He he kind of takes over the party, really. Absolutely. And now he's it appears he's lost. Where does it go from here? I've always said that Republicans should have long adopted. This should have been a landslide victory, by the way. And I think there was. A lot of things that we can sit up here and blame all day long, the, the, whether it be the fraud, the media and a lot. Yes, of course, that had something to do with all of the lies that got out there. But there were a lot of opportunities that he had. He could have came in. He could have when he when it came to decriminalize the drugs and, and, and stuff like that, putting an absolute hack uh, to the to the drug war. That was a massive thing that could have worked out for him, that could have worked to his benefit. But he dragged his feet on it. I'm not talking about the first step back there. I'm talking about legitimately not getting beat to the punch. And that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to come in. They're going to get even more support than they have because they're going to come in as a party of, well, now we want to sort of take a take an ax to the, the whole entire drug war instead of the Republicans should have gotten by that look. If you guys are frustrated, whether non-voters like myself or it be people that vote for the Libertarian Party, if you think that they're the ones definitely with all of these close races deciding the election, how about you adopt libertarian positions? It's not like they're antithetical to conservatism. Your beloved Reagan actually even said that. He said mm -hmm. that conservatism was libertarianism and it always was. Because when you believe in this concept of limited government and all these theories that a lot of these Republicans claim to believe is why I always say they they were they campaign like libertarians and they govern like Democrats because they have an opportunity to get some of that support that will get them on the good side of youngsters that will get them on the side of, of liberty, which is what they claim to advocate. And they don't have to abandon principles to do that. It's just a, a lot of old, outdated ideas, particularly like with the drug war that they need to absolutely abandon. And I think Trump had the wrong people in his ear on that. I think a lot of the Republican parties have the wrong people in their in their ear. So they need to remove. You want to talk about the culture war. I think what they were putting that little facade that they were putting up, that was a fake culture war. For the most part, conservatives aren't even involved in, in subcultures for the most part. If anything, they shun a lot of the su subcultures. Definitely libertarian. God forbid I'm a libertarian and like sports, for example. They make fun of you. So it's like, and then they wonder why they're culturally inept. Yeah. That's where the war is being fought. This is why I say get involved in music. Go get involved in all these other subcultures because the politics, that's the downstream. So the Republicans should pivot. Certainly start adopting liberty, becoming more culturally relevant. Stop stop letting the AOCs of the world beat them at their at that game. AOC gets on Twitch and all she has to do is ex exist. When that was an opportunity yeah. that conservatives long should have been, been taken existing in those spaces. That's the pivot that they have to make. Otherwise, they're going to continue to lose and lose big. Well, and you mentioned the drug issue, which you know was on the ballot all over the place and won all yeah. over the place. I mean, every yeah, it won almost everywhere. It was on the ballot. Yeah, including you know in a year where I think you could look at people will get fooled by the fact that Trump lost and say, 
well, wait a minute. Um, this is an election where the Republicans did relatively well in all the other places. And, and that same audience, you had people saying, you know what, we want freedom to be able to do these things if we, if we want to do them. I don't find that to be inconsistent at all with, with what Republicans uh, talk about and conservatives' principles. Small government. And I, I think, like, we get away from that so much. And there is this battle, this real battle among conservatives and, and conservative thinkers between do we have this sort of common good conservatism where we're kind of always looking to have the government step in and do things uh, that will help the common good, or do we go to this sort of, like, rights-based Right. Uh, you know, approach. I assume you you uh, would, would favor the rights yeah, base. Absolutely. Uh, but it, how does that get communicated to people who want to fight that culture war, who want to be able to kind of implement their will a little bit through the government? Well, I mean, th- they have to understand how I always have worded it is in a way that, look, you, when it comes to that power, the problem has always been is that the wrong person gets it the precedent has been set often by your own guy. We saw that with Reagan with the uh, with, with uh, gun control and they set the scene and then it gets off the rails. Adopt the position of liberty even when it's inconvenient. Mm. And I think the drug war is one of the biggest parts where people, for whatever reason, equate, let's say, being anti drug war with being pro. I'm straight edge. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm straight edge. I don't yeah, we, we're we're going to have you in for our 100th episode yeah. drink-a-thon, and you're yeah. like, nah, that's not my game. Exactly. You know, I, I'm straight edge, <laughs> yet I'm anti-drug war. You don't have to be. Right. You can recognize it's failure. You can recognize that it's antithetical yeah. to freedom. And it does not equal there's going to be a bunch of junkies everywhere. You And we've seen that, and a lot of conservatives would admit that historically when it comes to prohibition. Yeah. Era of, like, yeah. It was the same exact thing where that equaled actually more violence. You want to talk about cartels and, and people being incentivized to, to, to to immigrate to get away from that a lot of americans policies on the drug war incentivizes that behavior so if they just took the position of liberty even when they feel it's inconvenient it does not mean that you have to be pro that action it doesn't matter whether what it is drugs or anything else there's a multitude of different things that i don't participate in i don't partake in but i don't think it should be illegal mm-hmm. or rather you should be punished for it in the event that you want to do it and i think if they could take that position and stop letting the the democrats beat them on these issues the democrat this is why we, they always say that they're like progressives and they go on the speed limit more so because yeah, they get right. to the position late yeah right when they can get to it early and beat them to the punch and finally win get on the offensive is all all only thing i've asked of these conservatives instead of continuously getting beat to the punch well so let's let's go down that road a little bit because the pushback i get from my conservative friends on that particular issue is we we believe in personal liberty however when you're taking drugs you become addicted to drugs and that's not not always the case but it, mm-hmm. it can it can happen mm-hmm, absolutely you lose that sort of personal agency you've 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 even if you did it by mistake and it didn't you didn't mean for it to happen you lose that personal agency therefore you're not making those decisions and the rest of society wind, winds up picking up the slack there now of course i know obviously like a lot of these programs you wouldn't have in place that that might be in place now mm-hmm. that's a big kind of major change to make absolutely how do you address that when you're talking about people who, not by their own choice, are continuing to go down this road because they're addicted. Yeah, I mean, it's a real thing. And the fact that we can't be open and honest about drugs, I think it's part of that. And a lot of people don't come out and, let's say, talk about their uh, issues with addiction and, and talk about their... Like, these are stuff that should be out in the open, at least in my honest opinion, because even from a cultural standpoint, you'd be surprised the progress that you can make. And and let's say, like, again, the straight edge movement and punk rock and stuff like that, we, we've seen a lot of people shun that bad behavior. But but it has to be out there for us to speak about it instead of just immediately demonizing people, making them criminal in the event that they possess it. Doesn't matter what it is, whether they take it or, or sell it or, or what have you. So, yes, could people get addicted to these drugs? Of course. They do it now, though. Right. And they do it now and they get it. And it's far more dangerous because of the fact that, well, it is illegal. So they go by illegal ways to get it, whether it be through gangs and, and all sorts of things. They're curating a more violent 
uh, uh, atmosphere in the event that if it was decriminalized, you'd have a more open and honest conversation about drugs. Um, and you'd also if you if you, you again, you could be in opposition to it. I'm actually in. Op- it's not that I just don't consume drugs. I'm in opposition to the usage. Right. right. If you hear me talk about it, you say it all the time. That is stuff that I don't want near me. If, for the bands that hate us when we're on tour, I would tell you in a in a in an easy like moment, like, dude, get that crap away from me. I don't want it near my bus or anything like that because I am adamantly against that. And that's OK. You can be that way and still be, uh, uh, let's say, anti-drug war. And I think that's the biggest issue definitely with conservatives is that they conflate the two. So they think being an- like anti-drug war or th- not thinking that it shouldn't be, let's say, or rather you think that it should be right. decriminalized. They find that an issue and they think that it equates to you being pro the usage and they can't wrap their minds around that's not the case so that's why you can lead and i try often to lead with i can be have two positions at one time right Right. i can be anti-drugs and in nature and anti-drug war as well i can be pro freedom while being uh, anti-drug i just don't uh, look these people are supposed to be free let them be free and yes if they make some mistakes that stares to make and in any other thing whether it be in the bedroom or anything else generally the conservative would agree that that is not the government's job to dictate that why they take that hard left or right whatever you want to call it sure. on drugs is is beyond me but i think it's also a lot of propaganda that's <laughs> winning into the drug war yeah yeah, yeah it's um, well i'm most amazed about how you made it through 2020 without alcohol yeah <laughs> I, I have no freaking idea i wouldn't have uh blaze tv's eric july uh, thanks so much for coming on the program don't Thank miss you. a minute of eric uh, or uh, myself this show news and why it matters uh, with your very own subscription to blaze tv just head to blaze tv.com slash stew use the promo code stew because that's how they know you like this stupid show plus you're gonna save 30 bucks still it's supposedly still active give it a shot the 30 buck discount Eric, thanks for coming on the program. Man, appreciate you having me on, man. All right, back in a second. So there's still a bunch of talk, and I, and I want to make sure we address the idea that there's a bunch of legal claims coming from the Trump campaign, and they're trying to figure out which votes should be counted and which votes shouldn't be counted. Now, there's a lot of stuff going around the Internet, which is not what the Trump campaign is actually talking about. Uh, it's important to know the difference. A lot of this stuff is just viral, you know, typical viral videos and cons- you know, conspiracy theorists. There are a bunch of stuff out there right now when it comes to voter fraud. Much of it is not true. The Trump administration, though, thinks it's found some stuff that is true. They're going to be filing suits based on this to try to get recounts and in certain chunks of votes overturned that they don't believe are legal. Um, I know there's a bunch of great shows here on The Blaze. And by the way, are you a subscriber yet? blazetv.com slash stew promo code is stew you'll save 30 bucks off that subscription um i know steven crowder was doing a bunch on this i know steve dace is doing a bunch on it check out the entire lineup of uh, blaze tv hosts because they've got a lot of uh, information on uh, on those specific individual sort of uh, uh fraud claims um i want to kind of step back though and you know we all we all have our little role in this and we all have to make sure we're pushing at every single button to understand how this stuff goes down One of the things I'm not kind of interested in is the shift in voting as it's been calculated so far. And one of the interesting things is from Pennsylvania. Now, we know Pennsylvania was needed for Trump to win uh, in 2020. Uh, We know it didn't go his way unless something drastic changes. He's down by something like, I think, 50,000 votes. Now, some of the claims, um, and especially the ones that are, that are on the Internet, about uh, are about Philly and, and how votes were being overcounted there. We'll see if anything specific comes through when it comes to the legal challenges there. But really, that only tells a part of the story. You didn't need to, even with whatever happened in Philly, you could have won this election in Pennsylvania if you would have done the same types of things that had, uh, that had happened in 2016 in the suburbs. Let me give you an example of this. Uh, I used to live in Bucks County, uh, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, a little, uh, right, a little north of Philly. Um, what you have there is in 2016, Hillary Clinton won Bucks County by 2,700 votes. This time, in 2020, Joe Biden won it by 15,909 votes. Again, you're talking, you know, 13,000 plus votes on the positive for Joe Biden over Hillary Clinton from last time. The same thing in Chester County. 25,000 was the the margin for Hillary in 2016. 52,000 in 2020. Another 27,000 votes. 
In Delaware County, 66,000 was the margin for Hillary in 2016. For Biden this time, 84,000, another 18,000 votes. And in Montgomery County, uh, 93,000 votes was the margin in 2016. That goes up to 130,000 this time. The difference we're talking about is these four suburban counties. Hillary Clinton won them by 188,000 votes. Donald Trump lost them in 2020 to Joe Biden by 283,000 votes, almost 100,000 vote difference. And again, this is a state that currently has margins around 50 or 60,000. So the entire difference between these two candidates, even with whatever shenanigans may or may not have happened, came in a vote change in these four counties, not in an inner city, not in, uh, you know, some deeply Democratic a stronghold, but a suburban area where it was, you know, favored to maybe go to the Democrats, but instead uh, wound up going uh, for the Democrats even more than was expected from last time. This is an issue, and this is one of the issues with Trump's coalition, generally speaking. You know, one of the things Trump got a lot of praise for in 2016, rightfully so, was he won, he won, and maybe we should do a monologue on this maybe later this week, or maybe when these numbers finally settle, but he won against Hillary Clinton, largely because he was able to take a giant chunk of people who considered themselves Democrats, right? People who were blue collar Democrats who said, you know what? I can't stand Hillary. I'm a little skeptical of this Trump guy, but I'm going to go for him anyway. At least it's something different. He's going to shake up the system. It's but those people are harder to hold on to in a coalition. They're not naturally aligned with, you know, generally speaking, Republican uh, policies. So in 2020, when they've seen Trump run the country for four years and run the country kind of like a normal Republican in many ways, that didn't connect with those same Democrats. And a lot of them in suburban areas of Pennsylvania and all over the country wound up uh, falling back to the Democratic side, largely because the Democrats decided this time to run someone who was senile instead of someone that everyone hated. That was an interesting. It was an inch, like, you know, a bold move, Cotton. You know, it was like one of those types of moments. Okay, this is risky, but it wound up seemingly paying off, you know, pending any, any legal action. So that's kind of interesting. And it, it sets up a, a really fascinating next few weeks. We have uh, Thanksgiving, we have Christmas, and then we're going to come out of Christmas and New Year's, right? Come back on that Monday, right after New Year's, like we usually do. We're off the couple weeks preceding that. And then on Tuesday... We are going to have a, an election day again that is going to have the importance of this past uh, this past Tuesday, like legitimately that much importance. The Senate race in Georgia, there's going to be two of them. Republicans need to win at least one of them to can maintain control of the Senate. If they do not do this, Democrats can do all the crazy crap they want to do. That's how important this is. You can't lose both of these races. They're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars. If you live in Georgia, you will never see a commercial that is not a political commercial again, at least until January 5th. If McDonald's launches the McRib in your area, you will not be aware of it because you will not see any McDonald's advertisements for the next two months. I don't want to scare you. I know this is terrifying. Any new if there's a new kind of Oreo that comes out, you're not going to know because you're going to be seeing. Uh, you know, Purdue commercials, not the chicken, but the candidate over and over and over again. I warn you, this is coming, but it is vital for our republic, Georgia, that we get this one right and at least get one and hopefully two candidates through on the Republican side in Georgia, because we do not want to give unfettered control of this government to the people behind Joe Biden. You don't want that to happen. Okay. Take a break. We'll have more in a second. It's a new book out about liberty. It's called Not Free America. It's written by Mike Donovan, who has uh, been fighting against the government, uh, wielding control in unreasonable ways uh, for a long time as the founder of the nation's largest pro bono civil rights law firms. Uh, Our Bill of Rights has been under attack for a long time. This goes way before COVID. It goes way before George Floyd. It goes way back, and it's been going on for a very long time. If you love the blaze, you're probably the type of person who doesn't want the government cracking down on you, on your way of life, regulations, whether it's regulations, whether it's control uh, through uh, the Second Amendment, all these things that are going on all the time. 
That's been sort of a creeping thing for a while. It's just been, you know, it's like one of these cars that's going really slow through an intersection and then decides to gun it. Since the COVID thing happened, they've been gunning it. Not Free America has a Liberty Pledge on their website. You can take that. And if you kind of get the book, you can read it. They've got ideas for actual solutions to these problems. Go to notfreeamerica.com, notfreeamerica.com. You can order your book there. You can take the Liberty Pledge. You can try to look at these problems in a, in a rational way and see what we can do to end them, not just for the next couple of months, but for a long time going forward. It's notfreeamerica.com, notfreeamerica.com. Order your book today. And you know what? If you think that the Georgia election is not a big deal, let me tell you what's going on right now. They're shipping in Andrew Yang. The Yang gang is coming to town. The effing Yang gang. Do you know what that means? Up to 4% of the Democratic voters could move in any direction, no matter what Andrew Yang says. Could happen at any time. Uh, Andrew Yang is moving his family, apparently, to Georgia. Now, does that mean he could vote in Georgia? Is that how this works? I would not be surprised if they found some loophole. Uh, But there's two uh, races going on there. Of course, uh, Kelly Loeffler and uh, David Perdue. Uh, going in on, there's two different races they need to get over 50%, so that's why we have these runoffs. Georgia has weird election rules like this that have been out there for a while. So we're going to be watching that race very, very closely. Um, And we also have to tell you another election development. Eva Longoria is in trouble. I know. You you must be very distressed, as I am. Uh, She tweeted this, women of color showed up in big ways. Of course, you saw in Georgia what black women have done, but Latina women were the real heroines here. Beating men in turnout in every state and voting for Biden-Harris at an average of three to one, which is great, um, except you're not allowed to say things like that because apparently she's in trouble because she was not woke enough because you're never woke enough, ever. There's never a thing you can say that's woke enough that's not going to make someone else say that you're being hateful or discriminatory. Apparently saying that um, black women did a good job, but Latina women were the real heroines means that you're downplaying black women, which means you're a racist. So Eva Longoria is a racist. That's confirmed by science now. Okay, that's not me saying that. That's the scientific community. Dr. Fauci made a public statement saying Eva Longoria is a racist. I saw it happen. Don't quote me on that, but it's true. Well, at least it feels like it should be true. That's the important thing. Back in a second. All right, let me tell you about something really cool. And I did not know about this until very recently. It's called Glint. Now, we've talked about investing in gold for a while. And the problem with investing in gold is how do you, I don't know, how does it work? How do you do it? I don't know how to do it. Plus, you have money in gold. You can't spend that money if you need it. It's a pain. Glint has taken this entire thing and remade gold as to an, it's like an, you can put yourself on your own personal gold standard. If you like the idea of maybe not having your currency waste away in value, as a lot of these uh, fiat currencies will do, Glint has a great idea. So basically what they do is you buy, when you, you put your money on your Glint card, you're buying real gold, real gold that's kept in like Switzerland. Uh, they do have a specific location for you if you're interested in such things. And Uh, that basically you own real gold and that gold will uh, increase in value if gold increases in value. So you're investing in gold, but you can also spend that money whenever you want on a, I've got one of of the cards right here. Look at this. It's like, it's like a normal MasterCard. That's it. The Glint card. And you can go into any store and you can use that card and you are, you know, it's got all the stuff you need. It's all insured. They go through all the regulations. It's all, all above board. It's all new. It's really cool. Check it out. It's called Glint Pay. Glintpay.com slash stew. G-L-I-N-T pay.com slash stew. The slash stew part of the address is important because that's how they know you like this stupid show. But you get to actually spend gold at real stores. Who knew this was possible? Glintpay.com slash stew. Get out of the way of the government. Glintpay.com slash stew. Love to get your reviews on iTunes. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars. This one says, Conserva Nerds, Conserva Nerds, unite. 
That's me. Whatever. Well, thank you so much. Five freaking stars. The appropriate number of stars. Stu does numbers. Stu does facts. Stu does America. And it's great. Whatever. Five freaking stars. Thank you. Love it. One of the best and most entertaining conservative shows out there. That's true. Five freaking stars. Science, by the way. It's great. Stu, you're a freaking genius. Your stupid show is so worth the five freaking stars. Thank you very much. Best episode. Stu does not have a law degree, but he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe on bird law with anyone. It's always sunny here. As you may know, five freaking stars. Uh, how about this one? It's a number one source for random facts and graphs that just confuse me. Why is he wearing a tuxedo? But it's great, I guess. Whatever. How many stars? Well, five freaking stars. It's not a tuxedo. I just look good. That's all it is. I just look good.